You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. No, because I didn't want to confess like that. I guess I could have told him I was cold, but... Mm. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. Redacted. In some jurisdictions, redacted isn't even legal. But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Oh man, I don't like either of these options. Cause like, I don't want to be mean, but flatter, uh, I'll just flatter him. You know, I think we might make, great, might make a great team. A, oh, geez. a single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eyes. He gazes out the window and with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner, could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. Why does she just keep running? She was going to do it last night, too. She just runs away. There's still one more day of school, after all. The University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, awaits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. It, it's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Well, sure, but you will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Pop, he asked me to go out with him. Of course, I told him, you better harness those wild horses, young man. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know the little guy. Long story short, he took me to his favorite shush house. Shush, shush house, but things quickly sprouted out of control. Uh, did she just say shush house as if that's a thing people just say? What is that even referring to? <laughs> and no, I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole, her whole story, however. Following up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection, wowzers. Miriam offers to support you no matter what you do. Together with your bestie, you feel like you can do anything. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the, in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Aww. You can get your swirly dip, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Mm. Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. There's that her there is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school. But who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? <gasps> You've got some nerve, jerk off Jane, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. <laughs> you clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up, ever. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Jerk off Jane. How's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. <sighs> Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Oh my gosh. <laughs> why is, why is just, why are you being like this, Jane? Excuse me, jerk off Jane. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, jerk off Jane. Jane jerk off Jane's being a jerk, for sure. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' of inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spellbook you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. 
Whoa, that's a book? That- it looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know, who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I could think of one surefire way to find out. You open the page to a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. Ooh. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else, not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine, it is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Oh, can I save during the... Don't think so, okay. I'm gonna do it. You begin to recite the spell, but you stumble on the words, and the only effect it seems to have is to make you forget what it is you were doing. Oh, right. After looking at the page again, it comes rushing back to you. You've got a memory race. Oh, okay, game. This is bullshit. Absolute bullshit. This is stupid. Why even give me the option for this one if you're not going to let me do it? Fuck that. Okay, don't do it. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost- that actually is really aggravating. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. You must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. You reach into your backpack and grab some homework from last semester that you forgot to turn in. Sprinkles immediately goes for it and gobbles the sheet of paper like it's a piece of fresh chicken rawhide. Uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Aha, uh -huh, I apologize for the outburst. I know it seems cliche, but not much in this world satisfies like ungraded homework. Uh, or, or ungraded work. My, my, jerk off, Jane. Were, were you studying something with cinnamon? I have been sitting in on a lecture series around the art of cake baking. How insightful. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, jerk off, Jane, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable indispensable bit of wisdom you see but before he can go any further miriam's love drama spills over into the class sprinkles is interrupted by sad whimpering coming from the back of the room i told you to save it for after class but i miss you we went on one date pop and how can you miss me when i'm right here pop's voice quivers as he pleads his case to miriam every time i blink you go away again oh jesus christ <laughs> That's a really cute thing to say. Marion, what happened between you and Pop? I got her in trouble and now she's mad at me. I didn't just get in trouble. I got yelled at by Pop's mother, who blames me for getting him banned from every museum we set foot in. Oh, so that's what she meant by shush house. Pop, we went on one date, we're over. And it meant so much to me that I made this for you. Too hurt to go on arguing. Pop leaves his uh, creation behind and runs out of the room. Is that a fucking like full ass egg in there? Is that, is peas, carrots, and jello with pretzel arms. What is? What are the eyes? I can't even tell. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we want to be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam TM. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. <clears throat> a lot of reading. Holy shit. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought they were going to say Colonel Sanders again. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even to the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to settle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset with that? Oh, she's saying, she's not saying like, uh, as a question, there's no question mark. So she's saying, You're not going to settle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. 
Well, maybe sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. Why don't you just stick with your friend? I mean, seriously. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Okay, how about you take your own fucking advice, Jane? Because that's exactly what you're doing with the Colonel. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you are pep talking, Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You decide to head to the arena early to practice the dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van's supposed man-man and his evil or counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Jerk off James, jerk off Jane's famous chicken pot pie. Oh, not the pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, you cr your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders because of fucking course it is. And he seems to bring cherry blossom petals with him wherever he goes. Jerk off Jane, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final... There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. <laughs> I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who is hungry. But the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. But that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Ah, uh, just fess up. You don't want it- Because if you ignore it, it's gonna burn. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know, my nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Ha, huh, no. I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC, but it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. Oh shit, the moment of truth. Wow. That shit does look good. <laughs> Gasp, it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. Wait, who gave you permission to taste it? I've always loved country cooking and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. Oh shit. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese, plus the pot pie you've been practicing, are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top shell- Shells? <laughs> over-the-top selves! Oh dear. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big, going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. Miriam fiercely injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, best. Baster blaster? <laughs> what? Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. <laughs> this is so silly. Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? <gasps> It's the singularity, as was foretold. We mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all. self destruct Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? No, do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, jerk off Jane. Miriam notices too. And I've always believed in you, jerk off Jane, since we, since we, 
since we were little kids because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who is cooking? Tiny food short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient. Oh, you mean the one that was actually fake? Yeah, he, however, she doesn't know that Colonel Sanders made that first ingredient up to throw you off the trail of a secret recipe. The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the spork monster. Steve? Wait, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We spork monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve, the spork monster, notices that you've got the grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? Ha, yeah, you guessed it. Sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup, back in the old country, you can feel spork monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school that I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class, and when I woke up, you tossed a serious stare at Steve, and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. Ha! I'm not gonna give up and drop out. I'll just summon extra power. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. I'm sorry. Are we going Super Saiyan now? Your hair turns back and she's orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for it. Yes, jerk off Jane. You are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off of the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you are powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear jerk off Jane. You may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union? Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment that everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to, pre to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off screen, you hear a pure innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Hee hee hee, I'm flying! It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? It's out of the closet you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad! It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly your book material. Wait a second. Pranks? Pranks? Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature war beep or other onomatopoeia, but there's no, no- but there's none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. Well, okay, but earlier it showed that Van Van had fucking unplugged him and pushed him out the back door or something. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow. Three whole days long. I wish college had been just three days per semester. Oh man, that would have been so much cramming though. Holy shit, never mind. But after days of hard work, the time is the time has come? I think that's meant to say the time has come for me to eat. 
Miriam, please step forward. <clears throat> now, describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles and savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny narutomaki I spy afloat in this itsy bitsy bowl? Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine. I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Jerkoff Jane, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made uni over smooth egg custard and an axe hewn urchin shells topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different color type of urchin? Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in, leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof, woof. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Grrr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch, my tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my, to my tongue. This qualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? De dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount simplicity. This is the, l the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now, describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something, jerk off Jane? I told you, it's a display piece. Actually, I must say it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. And I did an extremely job, good job cooking it too. I didn't realize we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. Wow, burn. <laughs> and with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best. But this time, without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me, either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs! What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drumroll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing, and completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. Oh, damn. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Okay, Oprah. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win! Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. <laughs> DJ Dog is in the house! Dog noises! I am not attempting to do those noises. 
You know that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed- What the fuck is Van Van wearing? Uh, tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's the Spork Monster. He has totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here out, I'd prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. The student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry, Party Monster. De dejected, student walks off. Aw, Miriam looks cute. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking and you know she's gonna do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop! He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop! I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. Miriam, will you be my lady king? What an incredible turn of events. An offer to join the royal family. It's like a dream come true. You'll get to be a princess or maybe a queen. I'm not sure if he even knows, but either way, crowns and gowns, baby. I'm sorry, Pop, but I'm not interested. Not now, at least. I've got so much to do with my life. A twist on a twist. So many more three-day universities to attend. So many tiny foods to meticulously sculpt and then watch get accidentally blown away by a single sneeze. To be fair, her small food stuff is really cute. Okie doke. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I'm actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? <laughs> I actually feel like I knew it this whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, oh, there's the flower petals again. Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? It... Is it? Uh... I guess it is. It's not letting me do anything. All right. Well, fair. All right. So... <laughs> oh, that was the game. What a goofy little title. Yep. Well... That was entertaining. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Definitely silly. Definitely out of the norm. But yeah. I'll see you all in the next playthrough. Bye for now.